Hi guys, welcome back to Tango and Rakia. Today we are going to be speaking about how to manage money when you are traveling abroad. Our main idea today is to show you not only how to save money when you are traveling abroad, but also to avoid unexpected and unnecessary expenses. For example, maybe you didn't took insurance and then you end up breaking up your leg and then you will have to pay a lot of money for that. Or you didn't wait your suitcase, so then you end up paying a lot of money at the check-in. So that are the kind of things that we are going to discuss today. The first thing that you need to consider when you are preparing for a new trip is to do budgeting. Which are going to be your priorities in this particular trip or travel? For example, a couple of years ago, we went to Bali. And of course, when you go to Bali, you want to go to the best hotel with all the spa and the wellness and the luxury and the big breakfast and amazing dinners. So in that case, we are going, we were going to put a lot of our budget in the hotel because beside that, we were going to be walking around, going to the beach or just going to, to eat street food. So it didn't make any sense to say a lot of money to, to go to museums or, or to take a boat trip or anything of that. So in that case, the budget went to the hotel. But let's pick another example. A few years ago, we were we went also to Lisbon. And in that case, we were not really caring about the hotel because we knew that we were going to be walking a lot, going to a lot of museums, going to restaurants. So it didn't make too much sense to spend a lot of money there. So in that case, we saved a lot of our budget for museums, restaurants, and so on. Instead, we we stay in a normal hotel, two star, just two beds, single bathroom, and that's it. Single bathroom, and that's it. So, as you can understand, you cannot always decide the budgeting if you don't understand what you are going to do in your specific destination. For that, always do, first of all, your primary goals, what you want to do on your holiday. Once you have decided what you are going to do on your holidays, you need to start to prepare a list of things that you are planning to do. What is call it? Going to a museum, going for a boat trip, going for a fancy dinner, uh, going to buy souvenirs, to do a, um, some food tour. Write down a list of things that you want to do. On top of it, you can start to include also the cost of the tickets. You can also include the cost of the hotel or at least an average. For everything that you add in the list, you can start to add more or less, which is going to be the price. So at the end of the day, you will have a full list of the things that are going to be reflected as expenses in your trip. That way, you are going to know pretty much in advance how much you are going to spend in your holiday. Now, if you finish this list and you see that the total result is way too high for your budget, then you can immediately start to see where you can cut some cost. For example, there is some museum that you can go for free on a Sunday instead of going on a Wednesday. Or maybe instead of renting the boat for you, you can find a couple of person, two, three more person at the hotel, and then you all can rent the boat together to cut down the prices. You can choose a different hotel. You can pick a hotel that is not that centric and so on. You can try to travel instead on a Friday night, try to travel on a Tuesday. So all this kind of thing will help you to reduce a little the prices if you see that your original list is absolutely out of your budget. The second thing that you need to consider is how you are going to handle the money exchange. It's important that you do some little investigation before actually traveling. What is that? Because first of all, changing money at the airport is a trap. You will end up losing a lot of money in that operation. The same will happen if you change money in, a, in the center of the city. That is always a trap. You end up paying a lot of fees, you end up having a very bad rate exchange. So you need to avoid that. And there are two ways to do it. One way, if you, if you can change money 
before actually going to the plane would be the best option. You can find some currency exchange near your house or in the city in general and do the operation there. The other way is if you investigate in your destination which are the exchange companies and then you investigate online which of them has the best fee and the best exchange rate. The third point that you need to consider in order to manage wisely your money when you are traveling abroad and avoid falling into unnecessary expensive is to have a travel insurance. The travel insurance is not only to cover yourself if, if you break a leg, if you have an accident in the motorbike or any kind of that things. The travel insurance also work in case that the airline lost your suitcase, in the case that your suitcase is delayed, in the case that your flight is delayed, in the case that your flight is cancelled. In all of these cases, the travel insurance will become a very useful tool to have. In our case, we experiment this situation, for example, in Sri Lanka, where Anna had a problem with her tooth and we needed a, a dentist. So luckily we have travel insurance, so it was not that difficult to find a good dentist in the city of Colombo and we end up paying almost nothing for it. It happened also to us when traveling to Tanzania that unfortunately our suitcase was lost by the airline. So we didn't have absolutely anything. Luckily for us, once we pass the bad moment in a couple of days, we get fully reimbursed by the, comp by the insurance company. So at the end, it was not that bad. But if you don't have it, then you will cry. Point number four, what you do with cash when you're traveling abroad. So the first thing that we can suggest you is always be around with very small amounts of cash. That's the first advice. So in case you lost it, you get robbed, whatever happened, you will minimize the loss in order to carry very small amount of cash, the best thing that you can do is always try to pay by car. Avoid paying by cash by any means, unless it's absolutely necessary, avoid it. And also consider when you are paying by car in another country, always pay in the local currency. Generally, when you pay by car, you will get an option in the postnet where they are going to tell you in which currency you want to pay. So, always choose lo local currency in order to avoid any conversion exchange at that point. The second thing that you need to consider is to do exactly the same if you are going to withdraw money from the ATM machine. You will get an option and you always need to pick avoid conversion. Don't convert the money. Otherwise, you will end up paying a lot of money for exchange conversion. And the same, avoid to take money on the weekends. The weekends are the worst day all around the world to take money from ATMs because the banks make a frozen status of the exchange currency and they don't change it till Monday. So you will end up losing money for sure in most of the cases. The other advice that you need to consider if you are willing to pay by car most of the time is to inform your bank that you are traveling abroad. Nowadays, most of the car are managed by an application on your phone. So generally you can block and unblock manually your car. Nevertheless, we always suggest to inform the bank because it happened to us many times that we travel abroad, we try to use our car and the bank thinks that that is a suspicious activity and they cancel the car. So always remember to inform them if you don't have the application where you can automatically manage that option. So, also, even if you are carrying amount, a small amount of money, we suggest, first of all, try to have hidden pockets in your clothes. Maybe in the pants, maybe in a jacket, maybe in your shoes, I don't know. But always try to have a hidden pocket, something that is not easy to reach. And the other thing that we always suggest is to bring some sort of device or gadget that help you to carry the money. For example, we have a few options here. This one, we always use it when we go to beach, generally. As you can see, it looks like a normal box or bottle of sunscreen. And then you open it. 
it's a little difficult. And you can fit stuff here. Of course, it's not super secure, but it's pretty much dissuasive if you are in the beach. The other thing that is most common, widely known, is the belt. This belt is very easy to use. See, you have a zipper, you put your stuff, you close the zipper, and you put it under your clothes. Of course, this is not very practical if you need to start taking money on the street. So this is kind of something when you have the big bills and then you go to bathroom or to some, let's say, not crowded place to take the money when you need it. And the last option that I love to use is a wallet with a chain. It's not going to avoid that you get robbed eventually, but at least you will realize if they are trying to do it because they will try to push this. So this is another very good option. Point number five, cards. In order to carry very little amounts of cash, you will need to have credit or debit cards. In our case, we'll, we like to bring more than one card because it happened to us that we lost in the same two days, we lost one card in an ATM, one of them was blocked by mistake, and the second one was lost by myself. So it's always good to have redundancy with cards. You can lose it, it can get blocked, it can get dropped, it can happen many things. So don't bring only one card. You can bring one on you and one you keep it on your suitcase, you keep it uh, behind your phone, I don't know. You keep it in a different place to avoid that it suffer the same problem. In our case, we love to use two cards, two particular cards beside the ones from our bank. And they are Revolut card and N26 card. If you go to read the post, you will have a lot of information about the different plans that they offer and what are the advantages between one and the other. But to make it a little bit brief, we like these cards because you can top up the cards, which means that you can add money to the cards without doing transfers. And I don't know if you do it or not, but doing transfer between accounts of different countries and even between different continents, it could cost a lot of money. Not only the exchange, the currency exchange of the bank, but also the cost of the transfer itself. So these two cards are amazing to do that. You just top up the amount that you want from your main bank account and you get immediately the money there. The other advantage that they have is that they have a lot of ATMs that allow you to take money with these cards without having to pay any sort of commissions. In many cases, you even avoid to pay the local bank commission. So that's an awesome option. The only problem is you have limits of how much money you can take per month. And that's why we have more than one card with us also. Then they have applica the, the application that you run from the phone where you can block the car, unblock the car, control your expensive, change money without cost from, let's say, from euro to dollar. Uh, you can also see what, are, uh, what you have been spending split by restaurants, um, entertainment, flights, hotels, etc. So they are very useful and they have different plans. You have the free ones for both of them, then you have some of them call it Platinum, Metal, they are the names in Revolut. And the difference between this plan is how much money you can take from the ATM every month. If you are, if you are going to have a limit of transfer between cards. Uh, for example, the highest uh, plans from Revolut, they include a travel insurance for flights. Uh, if, if, you, if the company, if the airline lost your suitcase like it happened to us. They have insurance if you bought a uh, telephone today and it gets broken in, in the first month, then you also have insurance. So this insurance covers a lot of things. So they are pretty much good and you could consider it if you are willing to have some of these cards. But again, if you want to get a full detailed explanation of which are the benefits of Revolut and N26, don't forget to visit our blog in www.tangoandrakia.com and there you will have a very wide explanation of it. It's important also to consider, at least for us, some application that have a centralized alternatives to manage 
everything that is related to money and expenses during your travel. For that, we love to use two applications. One is called Spendy and the other is called Trip Budget. Both of them are free. You can install them in your phone. And from there, you can do a lot of stuff. But the one that I like the most is that you can set up a budget for your trip. And from there, it will start to discount every time that you spend money. So you will have a full control of in what you are spending and if you are still sticking to your plan or not. So it will be easy to apply some correction on the spot without waiting to the next month to realize that you spend way much more money than you were expecting. And the last thing that I forgot to mention about uh, managing cash is that on top of everything that I told you before, it's always a good practice to not carry all the money in one place. Don't put all the eggs in the same basket. So if you are traveling alone, maybe you can use some small change in your pocket, another part of the money in the belt or in the wallet, and keep another amount safe or in the suitcase or inside, inside, some, inside some other pant in the room. If you are not totally comfortable with leaving stuff on the room because you are staying in a hotel or something, try to leave something in the reception, maybe a closed box or something so they keep it for you. So these are some advices. So let's go to summarize a little everything that we were speaking about. Consider always doing budgeting. Make a list of your priorities. Make a list of which cost you can reduce. Make a list of the total cost in your budget and see if it is enough for the budget that you have allocated for that travel. If not, try to reduce costs from somewhere, hotel, flight, museums, restaurants, etc. The other thing to remember, currency exchange. Don't fall in the tourist trap. Don't change money in the airport. Don't change money in the center. Always carry small amount of money. Don't carry a lot of cash with you. If you are carrying money, don't put it all together and always keep some security system. It could be the belt, it could be a wallet, it could be some strange box like the ones that we show you for sunscreen, for glasses, whatever it is. Always have a hidden spot and spread the money. Remember to always book travel insurance. If you already don't have it, do it because it will save you a lot of money in your travels. Also remember, bring two or more debit or credit cards. You could lose one, you can get one rob, it can get blocked. So always have redundancy in your cards. So these are all the tips and suggestions that we give you to manage your money when you are traveling abroad.